Hey guys, testing the audio. It looks like maybe my background music is a little bit quiet. I don't know. Okie dokie artichoke. Here we go! Oh man, my camera is slow. Why is my camera going so slow? Hey, is my camera and my audio uh, off? It seems like it's off. I've, it was something I was trying to fix back uh, before, before we started. But I don't think I did the fixing good enough. Okay. It's working. It's working. I don't know if I'm timed right. It looks like I'm, like, slower. But. Whatever. What am I gonna do, eh? What am I gonna do, eh? Hey, guys. Today, check this out. We're making a pretty cool treasure chest. Um, we're making a treasure chest. Well, a mimic. I'm not sure actually if I'm gonna do a mimic or a treasure chest. I'm still gonna, I'm still thinking about that. But, we are going to be making something treasure chest like today. Um, I've got gold buttons in this guy. I might be crocheting the gold buttons today. I'm not very sure. Here's the dealio with the pattern though. I, <laughs> turned out I had, uh, the pattern was, uh, free. Um, it has been free the entire time that it has been published secretively and I didn't even know it So I went in yesterday to check out the pattern and make sure everything was going right and I realized that it was free And it's been free this whole time and I was like, oh Whoops, so I was like, okay, well, let's just leave it free for the next 24 hours since I forgot and we'll um, uh, And it'll be a free pattern during the live stream and then uh, Yeah and then I'll turn it, I'll put it to where, what it was supposed to be later on. So this pattern is free for the next 24 hours. Um, the downloadable PDF, you'll need a membership account, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, you can download it for free right now. 
The other thing is I had planned this week to do a giveaway. So we're doing a giveaway this live stream. So here is the dealio and you can see it on screen like right, right there somewhere. Um, we are doing a giveaway with this pattern. So if you crochet a treasure chest by next Friday and you post it on Instagram with hashtag club crochet live and tag the club crochet Instagram account, which is club dot crochet. Um, I'm going to give away a free one month membership to one person who uh, at random, whoever crochets a treasure chest and posts it to that Instagram. I'm going to randomly choose one of those people and, uh, and I'll announce it next uh, live stream. Uh, you have till next Friday to crochet a treasure chest. I suggest doing it while we're doing this live stream because it's cool, but you do you. Uh, yeah, so that's the two big things. Um, and let's talk about what materials that we'll need for today. And then while you guys are getting materials, I'll do all the shout outs for um, how to support the channel and all that fun stuff. So we're using all worsted weight yarn like I normally do. Um, today we're using, uh, I think, Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. We're using it in brown and gold. You also need a little bit of white and a little bit of pink. Not very much though. Um, you also might want some safety bead eyes and you might want to paint the safety bead eyes with um, uh, nail polish. Uh, I find nail polish is the best thing to paint it with. Um, you can also use uh, uh, whiteout. Whiteout works really well as well. Um, yeah, those are the materials you'll need. For the crochet hook, I'm using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook as I usually do. Um, let me get this thing working. Let's see how that works. Make sure the audio is off. Yeah, I got this whole new setup here this time. Um, I'm using a different camera and stuff like that. It looks like it's, I'm maybe a little bit bright in the camera, but what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, and let me now let me turn down the volume a little bit because now it feels like it's too loud. We're listening to Zelda music. I woke up a little bit later than normal this today. So I'm a little sleepy, but I'm okay. I've had I've had half a coffee, and I'll have to stop and have more coffee later. You also need a darning needle. I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. It helps sew in the ends. There's not too many ends to sew in on this guy, uh, but there are a few. Um, yeah, that's the materials that we're going to be using in this pattern. Uh, if you like my work and you'd like to help support this channel, there are a few different ways to do it. The first way is to become a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future patterns. For example, we have a pattern that just came out this week for membership exclusive or membership early access for a little crocheted bell bag from Animal Crossing. I just finished this video. I'm really, really proud of it. I did it in one shot video. I, I, I usually have a couple goof ups in the video um, and I have to like cut them out, but this one I did perfect. Um, yeah, so this pattern is out now on clubcrochet.com and you can access it with a membership. Members not only get early access to future patterns, they get exclusive access to all the patterns on the website. So you can access any pattern of that I have made in the past. You can get downloadable PDFs. Um, if you have a membership account, you can download the PDF for this guy. Uh, I'd like to show you the PDF, but I didn't set that up right. But it is really, really cool. There's uh, check marks to keep track of where you're at. There's time codes to um, go to different parts in the video. Uh, there are a bunch of other clickable links to videos. I took a long time, especially on this pattern, uh, putting it all together because there's all these arrows that show like um, it's a bunch of different par uh, parts of a treasure chest that are sewn together. Uh, so it took a long time. I, I think the PDF is really useful for this. Uh, I mean, you can obviously you can use the there's a complete video tutorial that's also available for it. That should help, too. Um, so members get all that kind of stuff uh, and memberships start at only five dollars a month and you can even get a free trial. So if you want to try it out, it's free. Uh, you can even get monthly kits mailed to your door with a membership. And this month's kit, we are making uh, a brontosaurus. And I also have, this doesn't come with this month's kit, but another way to support the channel is you can get, you can purchase kits from me. I have kits available for sale. And one of the kits I have for sale is actually for this treasure chest. Not only does it come with all the yarn and the eyes and everything, but it also comes with a bunch of gold buttons that you can stuff it with. 
Uh, it's pretty cool. I think I've only got a few more left over. So if you want it, go to clubcrochet.com slash treasure right there. And if you scroll down, you'll find a link for the, uh, the kit. Um, I might also have a link in the description, but I think I might have forgot that. Um, I'll get to the chat in just a second. I know there's a lot going on over there. Uh, so, yes. Uh, and another way you can help support, you can purchase stickers. I have stickers available for sale. You can find the link in the description below. I got a bunch of different kinds of merch, um, one of which is stickers. Here's the professional hooker sticker. I got a pink professional hooker sticker. Um, this is the stitched sticker. It's uh, This is the tabletop game that you crochet all your pieces for which I have an update about uh, later on in the video. Uh, I actually made this treasure chest specifically for Stitched. If you don't know what Stitched is, go to stitchedthegame.com. It's, it's really cool. I took a long time building this website that teaches uh, all about it. Uh, and then there's this anyone can be a hooker sticker that I'm really proud of. Uh, I think it looks really cool. Um, and this one's actually clear, so I have it on my computer right now. Right on the screen. No, not really. Okay, well, oh, and uh, this week I should be finishing up this Gulliver pattern. I know I've been talking about it forever, but it's taken a long time to do the video. Uh, so I have half the video done. I still have a little bit more to do. So this pattern will be coming out for Club Crochet members uh, this week. Okay, that sounds like enough, right? Oh, you can also get t-shirts. Check out my t-shirt. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, thank you, Mel Bell. Mel Bell is, is giving me shout outs out there. She is a moderator. If you got any questions, just ask her. We'll put this guy up here to the corner. Grab our brown yarn and get hooking. You can crew. Dang Nabbit, how you doing? Lizzie, how we doing? I got a really weird setup today. Um, where I actually set up my iPad so I can see the chat and the chat, I could get it like as close as I could to the camera. Um, I decided to try to use a separate camera today. I don't know how well that's gonna work, but I also have my pattern here so I can, I can follow along with the pattern as well. This pattern has a bunch of different parts that we have to put together. So we're gonna start by making the arch that goes on the top of it. And I won't be teaching this pattern in this uh, live stream. So if you want, there is a full video tutorial available uh, at clubcrochet.com slash treasure, but I won't be doing that in this video because I already did that. And it takes a long time, you know? One, two, three, four, five, and a lot of focus. And I want to talk with the chat. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. Hi, Toad, Toad Mag? Hi, Toad Mag. And Pearl. Hi, Pearl. All right, so I believe we should be working into the back loops. Yes, and we'll be single crocheting across. This pattern is pretty easy. It's just, um, it's a lot of just different parts that get sewn together. The tough part is putting everything together. But once we got all the pieces made, we'll be good. I do think this is a kind of long pattern. I'm not sure. I can't remember how long it is. Um, so I should stop stopping and fix my chair and get more comfortable here. Oh, bumping everything. All right. That's a little bit better. How do I look in camera when I'm sitting back like that? That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Recky the Drox is crocheting Totoro. Very cool. BB's got a crocheting a Yoshi. Uh, Brute, what brand of yarn do I prefer? I personally prefer, uh, I like Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. I like anything that's got 100% cotton. Um, that's my preferred yarn for Amigurumi. It makes the, the stitches really clear um, and doesn't pill um, as much. Pilling is when your crochet like creates little like dots of fuzz basically. It gets all fuzzy and pieces pop off of it. Okay. And 
it, and uh, cotton yarn doesn't really do that as much, so I really like that about it. Alright. I remember this being a long one. Oh man, I hope it's not too long. We might end up not doing a mimic and just doing a treasure chest, which uh, would be nice because I actually have a new stitch set that I've been working on. It's right here to the right, so I'll show it off in a little bit. But it doesn't have a treasure chest, and I think I should add one to it. Zoe is making a sloth. You know, I was working on a sloth pattern for the website at one point, but uh, other things got in the way, and I never finished it. The idea was to have magnets in the hands so that you could attach it to um, uh, the magnets to each other so that they could, they could hug whatever you wanted it to. Where do I get my yarn? Um, I get my yarn, I like to get it like at really any craft store. Uh, a lot of craft stores carry Lily Sugar and Cream, which is nice. Um, I actually have a bunch of, I get it directly from the manufacturer now because um, we're, we do kits and stuff. But you can get them at Joann's as well. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much anywhere you can get yarn, probably. I mean, you might not be able to find it at, like, Walmart. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, the giveaway... So, if you're crocheting, really, whatever, but if you're crocheting a treasure chest and you post it with hashtag Club Crochet Live, I'll... I'll I'll choose the ones out and one person will get a free pattern. Mel Bell, actually Mel Bell, I have a Baymax pattern. It was it was the prototype before I did uh, the the uh, before I really started Club Crochet. It was when I was doing Club Crochet on a Patreon with Louis Loop stuff uh, and I have a but uh, yeah, I have one. I'll send it to you. Remind me after this. I'll send it over. It's a, still a prototype pattern. I don't think it has a video tutorial. But I don't think you really... You probably can be good with that one. How many are we doing here? Okay, ten. There should be ten rows total, so we can just keep going. We've only got four so far. This one's kind of repetitive, especially um, the top arch because it's the longest part of it. But it's not too bad. It ain't too bad. The video seems relatively clear too. Um, I've got it playing like three times though, so. I'm surprised my internet hasn't been like, Hey, knock it off, please. Knock it off. What got me interested in crocheting original, uh, initially, asks Alex. Well, I started crocheting in high school. Um, there, I just, I just started to get really crafty. I would make like mix CDs for friends and stuff. And then um, I saw, I think, an octopus online that was crocheted. And I thought it was so cool that you could just essentially 3D print, 3D print, haha, <laughs> um, a, like, a toy. So I went over to Joanne's. I just started doing it. And then uh, I gave that first one to a friend of mine. And then I got really into crochet because... Um, I had a crush on a girl in high school, and that's so I would crochet her things. Like, every day I'd crochet her something new. And it ended up working out. We dated for, like, three years, but it was a bad relationship. But I got crocheting out of it, so, you know. <laughs> Good for me. Toad Mag, I gave you a shout out in the initially. Now you get a second shout out. There you go, bud.
Oh man, your school didn't even have art as a subject. That is a rough, that's rough. That should be definitely changed. Where do I get the patterns? Um, all these patterns are my patterns. Uh, Adam asks where I got the patterns, by the way. And yeah, I get all my patterns are available on clubcrochet.com. So if you just go to clubcrochet.com, you can find it. Um, this pattern is, is available for free today only at clubcrochet.com slash treasure. You can see it on the screen right there. Um, a lot of these patterns are up in my mind, though. Uh, although, like, the details about them can be different. Like, I think I can remember how to make all these, all the different parts of this treasure chest. But putting them together, I might need my pattern for. I'm just going to use my pattern throughout the whole thing so I don't want to think as much. Uh, and talk more. Two, four, six, eight. Last one, I think. We'll count again. But, um, yeah, you can find all the patterns there, and every one of them has a video tutorial. It takes a long time to put video tutorials for all my patterns, which is why I don't come out with as many as I probably um, write, because I don't want to come out with them if they don't have a video tutorial. Although I did start doing the rough drafts on the website for that exact reason. So there's rough drafts on the website that are just my written patterns that I never, I haven't officially published yet, but you can check it out. I think you just, um, you can find them on the homepage once you're logged in. You'll need a membership level account to access them though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, that looks like 10 rounds, or 10, 10 rows. Speaking of rough drafts, D&D &D Maps asks, are the dwarves coming out soon? Absolutely they are. I tried to get them this week, but this week I have been working on something else that I'm really excited to share with you. <clears throat> and it has to do with something that Vittoria just mentioned in the chat. Uh, a... Oh, we're going to use a magic loop for this part. A, Dean, uh, a game that has to do with dinosaurs. You see, this week, uh, my I posted on Reddit. I'm gonna, I got a whole story for you guys here that I'm probably going to screw up because it's going to be difficult to talk about while I'm crocheting, but we're going to try it. Okay. So this week I posted on Reddit, on the subreddit R uh, It's a subreddit where you just post like cute things. So I thought my T-Rex was pretty cute. So what I did was I posted it there and um, it was doing really well. Uh, it was gonna go viral. Like it, it, was, it was going crazy fast. Um, there were so many comments on it and I was replying to every comment and a lot of the comments were asking where I got the pattern. So I posted a link to the free video tutorial for the um, the T-Rex. And a lot of people were also asking um, to learn, like, how do you learn how to crochet? So I posted the link to my free, uh, my free how to crochet tutorial, Crocheting 101. A bunch of free stuff. And the moderators on that subreddit did not like that. So what they did was they took that post down uh, when it was going really well, and they permanently blocked me from that subreddit. Uh, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of like tired of it because I, I got really upset um, because they, they permanently blocked me from the subreddit because I was... Um, self-promoting is what they said and trust me this story has a, a direction I've got a, I've got a reason for telling you this whole story um, but I got really really upset that uh, that I got permanently blocked for self-promoting free crochet material that people were asking for I was never going out of my way to ask for it um, so I replied to the permanent ban and I was uh, and I said this is not fair. I didn't self-promote um, to anything to make any money. I, it was all for free tutorials, and they were all requests from 
specific people. And they had taken my stuff down from that subreddit before and I and for silly reasons like the I had said that my um I would posted a stegosaurus before and I said that oh this is a really cute stegosaurus don't you think and they told me I was asking for upvotes because I said don't you think and so they took my the post down and in my reply to that them taking that post down was I think you just don't think this is very cute and you don't want it on your subreddit but like, I don't think I'm really breaking any rules here. So I mentioned that again in this one. I was like, I think you guys are just trying to find reasons to take my stuff down. Oopsies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep, we're good. Uh, basically just like silent small creators and instead make it all, you know, repost and post about cats and stuff. And um, so once I, once I replied with like, hey, please don't permanently ban me. You can take the post down, but like, I didn't get any warning. You just permanently banned me. It seems completely unfair. They didn't reply to that at all. And instead, they permanently blocked me so I can't ever talk back to them. I can never respond. Um, so that obviously upset me a lot as well uh, because not only do you permanently ban me from a subreddit that I am completely participating in the right way, exactly the way you wanted me to, but you don't give me a reasonable explanation and then you mute me so I can never respond to your messages. Um, I was, I think, justifiably pretty upset. So what I did was, this was at like 2 a.m., so I was like seething upset and I couldn't talk to anybody about it. Jules was asleep in the other room and I was just like mad. I just had this anger and I don't get angry like ever. Um, so I didn't know what to do with it. And I knew that if I just sat there and uh, like sat in anger, it was just going to build and get me really, really upset. So what I did was I decided to convert that anger into something productive. And I had been talking about working on this for a long time here. And I'm sorry I haven't read the chat very much. It's just a long story. Um, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Chain working in back loops only. Okay, so if I do work in back loops only. Okay, sorry. I just got to pay attention to this pattern a little bit. Okay, so I decided to divert that anger into something more productive. And I've been thinking about making a table or a new board game um, with the dinosaurs and this one is my idea was I wanted to make one that's a lot more simple because stitched is really really cool I love it I think it's a, like the coolest thing I've ever made but it is complicated and it not you have to be a very specific uh, lover of games to want to play stitched so I wanted to make something that was a little bit more family friendly uh, and included an actual board. So I made a new board game with that anger. I turned it into something productive and I made a new board game. And I spent all week uh, uh, testing it out with my parents and, and Jules and every single person I've shown has been really into it, like way more than stitched. So I think it has a much, much broader... Um, uh, like uh, what's it called audience? Uh, cause it's cause it's a lot more simple to play, but it is uh, it still has that strategy element where it's fun for adults. It's it's accessible for for kid like I would say even like four or five year olds, but it is really really fun and can get like really complicated and tricky. Um, the idea is basically that you are a dinosaur escaping a volcano and each player, it's a two to six player game, and each player is controlling their dinosaur and trying to make it down the, down the mountain before the lava covers them up. Uh, and every turn you're placing two squares of lava and you're moving one space. So your, your goal is to kind of try to surround the enemy 
your your at the other players in the game so that they have less places to go as you're trying to get further uh, to the to the end of the um, of the lava before before anybody else does. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I'm gonna be playtesting it probably this week. I'll probably start sending out the playtest stuff. Um, I'll send it an, out an email. So if you would like to be a playtester, keep a lookout for your Club Crochet email. Um, so if you have an account on the website clubcrochet.com, you should your you should get an email from me uh, about this. But I'm gonna be looking for. And a certain amount of people to test this game out so that I can see if it's any if it's worth any time uh, or if it you know if there's things that need to get fixed and then maybe eventually I'll do I don't know a Kickstarter maybe for it because this one requires a board actually uh, so keep a look out there I'll ask for a bunch of people to test it out and and you'll get all the rules and everything you'll have to build the board obviously but uh, it's not that hard to build. It takes you maybe like half an hour to build all the things for it. And you have a lot of, uh, like a lot of people already have the crocheted dinosaurs anyhow. And they, the idea is gonna be that it's gonna be available for crocheters. Like uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to like market it kind of toward with crocheters to say like, hey, you know, if you wanna crochet these pieces, here's where you can go to get the patterns and stuff um, and you can purchase the the game with the the board and the the game pieces but you will it'll come with all the crochet materials so you, you could crochet your own um, uh, pieces like characters and then maybe doing another one with actual uh, cardboard cutouts or or plastic 3d printed pieces i don't know i'm still thinking about how to uh make it like a broader audience than just crocheters uh but obviously i mean crocheting is like my thing so i want to i want to pull crocheting in there if i can uh jules has been really pushing like hey you know yes you gotta talk about crocheting but i think this could be i think a lot of people would like this and i think you talking about it as a crochet game is going to make people less interested and you'll get less people interested in crocheting because less people will, will hear about the game and she's got really good points there so i'm still trying to figure out the best way to make it work here all right so that was a lot of ranting huh Whew. um i'm so proud of myself for i got like for diverting that anger that it, i mean clearly it's still there i'm ranting about it but not turning it into me saying anything stupid or being a jerk because it just I knew it wasn't gonna help it wasn't gonna help it was just gonna make me more upset and yeah I'm glad I'm glad that I did that oh <sighs> thank you for letting me rant I know I know it can sound a little annoying someone talking about this kind of stuff and but yeah Ooh, I like that idea. D&D Maps says there's a D&D &D with your friends. Uh, it's called Roll20 Zoom. I think that sounds pretty cool. Can I change this? Hold on. How do I... There we go. I wanted to change it so I could see the chat on the left side instead. There we go. I do. I don't think... I don't know if I have... Oh, what's the name of the game? Uh, so, the name is still pending. It's not... Uh, it's not solid yet, but I'm thinking... And no one steal this, please. But I'm thinking the name of the game is going to be Lava Run. I'm not sure about that yet, but I think it's going to be Lava Run. Fine. The magic ring. Dang Nabbit, I will show you how to do a magic ring. One second. 
Let me finish up this uh, this side here, and then I will show you how to crochet a magic ring. They are, they're not that tough. They're not too difficult. You don't need it too often in this pattern, only for a few different parts. Oopsies. Just realize I'm supposed to be working to the back of the loops. Right there. Actually, if you go to um, clubcrochet.com slash magic loop, you'll find a video that I made. Yes, I can work on a crochet toad. Um, I actually have a frog that I've been working on. Bonjour, Cici. Cici is uh, French and likes the tutorials, but has a hard time with English, I guess. Bonjour. Ça va? I can help. I can help with the magic ring. One second. I need to get to the end of this part. I also could use some more coffee. I did not drink enough coffee. Coffee. I love coffee. Très bien. <laughs> Mon français est pas bon. I don't even know if I said that right. Mais j'ai pu parler en français un peu. All right, where are we at here? Where are we at? We're on the front and the back. Oh, that's not too bad. One, let's make sure we're counting right. Two. Five. Okay, yeah, we're counting right. Oh, merci beaucoup. Um, toad. <laughs> Toad really likes toads. Toad Mag is a is a big frog fan. Pearl said asked if she should make a channel. I mean if you got something you wanna say, that's the best way to do it. Lily asks, do I have any tips on increasing from a magic circle? I, yeah, I, I, I suppose I do. Um, you know what? Let me, let me get this fella done here and I'll, I'll show you a magic circle. I'll show you how to, increasing from a magic circle is pretty easy. Um, you just basically, a magic circle, the whole point of magic circle is just to create like the first, um, the base of a, of a piece that is worked in the round. So, uh, working in a spiral, continuing around over and over into the same stitches. So, if, as you go around, if you put more, if you put increases into the second round, it'll start to increase pretty quick. That's that's actually how I do most of my patterns. So, if you follow along with like um, the, uh, let's see, what's the easiest one, the quickest one I can think about? Well, the new bell bag pattern is a good example, uh, but pretty much. Like 90% of my amigurumi, like if you go to the goblin one, uh, you just crochet the, the first three rounds is pretty much what I do for the majority of my patterns is what I'm trying to say. One, two, three, four. My brain is working as quick as it can, I, I, I promise. All right, so let me show you this magic loop here. Okay, so you take your palm out like this and you'll take your yarn and you want to go around your index finger three times. So you go around three times. So one, two, three. And you want to take the tail end here and you hold it between your middle and your ring finger 
like that. And then you you turn your palm in like, or your fingers in like that to grab hold of this end that's attached to the yarn. And it'll make a little finger gun. So you're making a little finger gun, pew pew, with three loops on it. Then you take your crochet hook and you go under the first two loops on your finger like this. One, two. And then you wanna grab hold of that third loop like that and pull that loop under the first two that you went under like this. Boop, boop. Now you want to go under that same yarn that you just pulled under that's attached to the ball of yarn right here. Grab a hold of that yarn and pull it through the loop that you just made like so. And that creates a chain and locks these loops into place so they can't go anywhere. So you can take it off of your finger like that. So now you got this little loop here and you can crochet into the loop. So I'll just do a round just so I can show you. Um, I'm gonna do six single crochets into the magic loop. So I'm gonna go into the center of the loop here and grab hold of the end that's attached to the yarn and pull it under that loop and then grab hold of it over the loop and pull it under the two loops on the hook and that'll make a single crochet. And I'll just keep doing that. So I'll go under, under the loop, yarn over and pull through, over the loop, yarn over and pull through. And I'll just do that six times. And then I'll show you how to close it up. I think that's the trickiest part is closing this up. Again, I have a full tutorial for this that'll be a little bit easier to follow along with. If you just go to clubcrochet.com slash magic loop, or you go to my YouTube channel um, and just look up magic like search magic loop there. But now that you have a bunch of crochets into the loop, you can pull this tail end just a little bit, just barely pull it. You're just gonna find out one of these two loops here on the top are going to get pulled in slightly. So what we wanna do is we wanna pull it just a little bit and see which one gets pulled in of these two loops. So you can see it's this one. See, see how that one's getting pulled in right here? So. Now that you know that that one's getting pulled in, we're going to grab that one and we're going to pull it down from where this tail end is coming out. That's going to tighten the second loop. See how it's tight tightening that other loop? And you want to pull that nice and tight till that hole is completely closed. And now if you pull this tail end, it'll pull tight the first loop. Boop, like that. And then there you go, that's a magic loop. Now when you work around, you'll just be working into the single crochets that you made into that magic loop. So I'm not gonna be doing that because I don't need this right now, but that's how you do it. Let's we'll go ahead and cut that and we'll throw that to the side. I hope that helps. Um, again, if you want a little bit more detail on how to do that, go to clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. Okay, one second before I get going, continuing here. Get this on a crochet hook though. Hold it in place. I'd like some coffee. Wow. <laughs> Dang, now you're convinced <laughs> it's sorcery. Yes, I'm a sorcerer. I'm a warlock actually. I get my powers from a ancient demon named Gargum Lark. Gorgum Lark the Hooker. Um, he is our savior and uh, all powerful. So everyone should uh, praise Gorgum Lark. <laughs> okay. All right. Continuing on. I gotta pop, this is where the magic comes from. You gotta crack the knuckles to get that magic out of your fingers. Ooh. And the neck cracks keep the magic from the fingers in line, you know? <laughs> okay, so we're still making all the parts of our treasure chest. Let's just keep rocking and rolling. How long have we been going for? Is there a way to tell? Oh, 45 minutes, that's not bad. Okay. Once we get them all, all the pieces, it shouldn't be too hard to just put everything together. Three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11. 
Oh man, I gotta tell you guys something. I went, so yesterday or two days ago, two days ago, I went to the beach. My, uh, my parents came to visit uh, and we went to the beach. I live uh, in California and we are right across the street from the beach. So it literally takes me three minutes to walk to the beach. There's nothing between me and the ocean. So we went to the beach and we went a long walk all the way down uh, to a big military fort that's down a little further south. I, it's an old military fort. There's no military on it anymore. It's, it's just a national park now. And we walked down there and we look out to the ocean uh, and there were whales, whales jumping out of the water, like all the way out of the water. It was the coolest thing ever. We watched them for like an hour. <laughs> it was so cool. I got a little video of it. I'll post it on um, my Louis Loops Instagram. I'll post it on like the, the Instagram stories later. Uh, but it is really, it was really, really cool. Uh, really, really cool. The, probably, it, it's a memory I'll never forget. Watching, whale watching from the beach with my mom. Great, it was great. One, two, three. It was really like, yeah, it was really cool. Maybe I'll go out later and see if I can find some more. I saw them once before uh, jumping out of the ocean like that, but I was alone when I saw them the first time. And that was like a year ago. And so I told people about it, but I feel like having someone else there uh, validates how cool it was, <laughs> especially the video I got. My mom is like, ah, this is so cool. <laughs> she started screaming. You live in the Valley, nerdy gamer, near Fresno. I have been very near you very, very often. Have I ever visited Santa Barbara? Heck yeah. I'm from, uh, so I'm originally from Southern California. Uh, from Ventura County. And that's where my parents live. They're, they're still out there. Uh, and then I moved up to San Francisco for college um, a long, long time ago now. I think I've been here almost a decade. And yeah, I just kind of like, I just kind of stuck around. I like San Francisco. I like the Bay Area. I have never been to Butterfly Beach in Santa Barbara, though. No, I have not. Not yet. I used to hate the beach. Um, it wasn't until I lived across the street from it for like two years did I start going, you know what, maybe I should appreciate this thing, and now I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, CC asks, how old was I when I started to crochet? Um, I was... Let's see, I was probably, I was sophomore year of high school, so that would be, let's see, if I was, I was eight, I turned 18 in senior year, so junior year I was 16, 17, 15, probably, probably about 15, so one, two, three, four, I think that's all I need, yes, I think I was about 15. So I've been crocheting, wow, maybe 16. I've been crocheting for over a decade, though. Like, well over a decade now. Toad asks, have I found a crab at the beach? I sure have. I found a bunch of crabs at the beach. They're, like, always there. They wash up all the time alive, and then they bury themselves in the sand and just to just have their little eyes poking out, and they hide because the the seagulls there will, if they see them, man, they will rip them up. It is crazy. One, two, three. Let's see, I'm making the base here. Got it. Ten and eleven. Um Yeah, nerdy gamer, I never go into the beat uh, into the water. I like playing in the sand a lot, uh, but 
I the the ocean scares me. <laughs> it scares me way too much. There's spooky things out there. <laughs> Plus we got riptides out here in San Francisco where like it can rip you out to the into the water and just pull you out really really far and you'll never get back cuz the current current is too strong. Um so we see helicopters coming out all the time and saving people from the water because they just don't understand that it's just too strong. So I'm way too scared to go out into the Pacific Ocean. The ocean is terrifying. It is scary. It's magnificent and incredible and I love looking at it and appreciating it. But I respect it too much to go into it. <laughs> Respect is a good way to say that I'm scared of it. Then the sharks get you. Deep dark water. Glass shark. Anybody watch uh, My Brother, My Brother and Me? That's a, uh, it's a podcast. I'm a really big fan of it. Me and Jules both love it. It's a podcast where these three brothers just like talk about anything, really. Uh, they... They say it's an advice show where they just give advice based on uh, people who submit questions and they find questions on Yahoo Answers. But it's really not good advice. Half the time it's not good advice. And they, the two brothers, they're so funny. Uh, all three of them are funny, but Justin and Griffin are the like, oh my God, those two make me laugh so hard. I very much suggest it. If you guys have not heard of My Brother, My Brother and Me, give it a listen. It is the best. <laughs> By the way, hello, everybody, again. Uh, let's just do a quick hello, seeing as we're, we're about at the halfway mark now. Um, actually, let me finish crocheting this, and then I'll do, I'll do my halfway mark hellos. Not that that's going to be anything very special at all. It's just kind of fun to do. What do you think about this camera setup? It's not bad, right? I think it's pretty okay. Uh, I think I'm going to put a new... Um, I'm going to purchase some new curtains for this window here. Uh, that's right behind me. This right here. Um... Because I think I might get lost in the brown, you know? You can't see my hair, where my hair starts in the... <laughs> so I'm just like, it's all hair. <laughs> it's all hair. But I think I'm going to get some kind of f cool design instead. I'm not sure. Maybe a color. We could do green and we can make it a green screen. But that seems kind of weird. I don't know. What do you think? What color do you think would be fun or... Do you think doing any color would be fun? <laughs> Maybe green screen would be fun because then I could do any color that I wanted to behind it. I don't know. What's my favorite color of toad? I can ask, I can tell you right now, I have never in my entire life been asked, what's my favorite color of toad? <laughs> but I would say, I know they're not toads, but I really like dark... Uh, dart frogs those little the little poisonous dart frogs so maybe like a yellow or red would be really cool ss how you doing just popped on in there Ooh, can you tell what we've been listening to now? I don't. It's been a little bit like just any kind of music. I tried to put on something that was a little bit more adventury, a little like because Dungeons and Dragons and Mimics and stuff like that. But now you can tell where it's truly from. Throw out a guess in the in the chat if you don't already know. Okay. So we're just about done with all the parts of our, at least all the parts that are brown for our treasure chest. We need to add um, the gold trim, and we need to add some locks, like a, like the, the lock right there. 
but we don't need our brown yarn anymore, so we can put that to the side. And I can say hello again. If you have, if you are just tuning in, uh, who knows, you know, maybe you are just tuning in. Hello, uh, one quick thing. This pattern is available for 24 hours for free. Free for 24 hours. Um, you can just find it by going to the link right here at the bottom, clubcrochet.com slash treasure. Uh, there's also kits available for sale if you'd like to get a crochet kit. Not only does it have all the materials that you need, but it also comes with gold buttons that you can fill it with. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of other ways to support this channel. You know all that fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, joining me in the live streams. You make my live streams a lot more fun and entertaining because just crocheting by myself in front of a light box can be kind of exhausting sometimes. Uh, but feel free to uh, like the video down below if you haven't already. Uh, it helps more people find this kind of my material, my, my stuff more often. And um, uh, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon to enable notifications so you get notified when new videos come out. Um, pretty soon we'll be coming out with this new pattern, which is a crocheted uh, bell bag from Animal Crossing. Uh, if you've been playing Animal Crossing, here's one I made with felt instead of a crocheted star. But I teach you how to crochet the star too. This is actually a pretty cool beginner pattern. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, it takes like, I don't even know what to do with them. I'm thinking of like hiding them all around the, like, the town. But like putting them in trees or something. But, uh, you know, with COVID, I don't really want to hide things around town and stuff. I don't know. Um, how much money are these things worth? <laughs> these are worth, these, these each probably have a hundred bells, hundred bell bags. Cha-ching, cha-ching. I have a 90, you want to see the big bell bag? One second. So this month we're doing a bunch of Animal Crossing themed patterns. If you haven't already been aware of that. Not only are we making those little bell bags, but we will also be making a bill bag, big bell bag. Look how big that is. This is this is the small one. Check it out here. Barely even you can barely even get it on camera. So we'll, we're also going to be making this one. This one's going to come out. Um, uh, in a week or two for uh, membership counts. So again, if you like these patterns and you want them earlier, you want them uh, permanently, become a Club Crochet member. It's the best way to help support this channel. Okay, this one, I use it right now for stuffing, see? Um, and there's, I think there's a marble in here somewhere because I wanted to do an, uh, an ogre or something that can see the future. So he'll have like a, a marble in its eye. One more show and tell. I should do a segment. Okay. Okay. Guys, I just got an idea. I got an idea for future live streams. And I want your opinion on it. So future live streams. Um, if I do crochet bunny day eggs, I'm unsubscribed. <laughs> no worries. I won't do bunny day. <laughs> I won't do any bunny day eggs. I My, my house... Uh, like what I can hold in my house, it's just filled with bunny day eggs now. Like, what am I gonna do with those? I don't even like the things that you can make with them. Anyhow, um, check out this this guy. He's a he's a uh, he's like a um, luchador. I watched Nacho Libre um, a few weeks ago, and so I wanted to crochet a luchador orc. But I should do okay. So here's my idea that I want your guys' opinion on. What if I did a whole segment, a halftime show? Obviously, it won't really be a show, but like a halftime that is a uh, show and tell, where I just show you the things that I've been crocheting this week. So this is this is our halftime show and tell show, uh, and here is the working uh, theme song for it. It goes, show and tell. It's not very good. You know, we're still working on it. Um, I've been making these new versions of uh, stitched characters because for stitched characters everything can be measured from the base of your character you know like 
just the whatever's at the bottom of it. So I figured, well, let's make coin versions that are, um, not only are they quicker and easier to make, here's an orc. See, not only are they quicker to make, like these take, I don't know, five, maybe, maybe 10 minutes, but probably like five minutes to make each one. Um, but they're easier to store. I can store an entire stitch set in this little tiny box. Yeah. So that's what we're making this treasure chest for. And so you can just, this is how you play stitched, by the way, is you have a piece down and then you use a playing card to measure distance and you move your piece like that. So again, if you haven't checked that out, stitched, stitchthegame.com. You get these cards too if you get a, if you purchase a goblinoid kit and stuff. So that's my show and tell. I got these little these little token goblins I've been working on. Um, I'll probably show this guy again next week because I want to give him a um, a uh, like a, a belt, you know, like a championship belt. I will. I D and D maps. I will be putting those on the rough drafts. A S A P. A S A P. <laughs> I promise. I will. I promise. Um, yeah, that's my show and tell and uh, the pattern. Oh, and then this pattern's coming this week again. Uh, this is my last show and tell is, is Mr. Gulliver here. He's pretty cute. And I'd show you the tabletop game, but it's a little difficult to fit it all here. The new board game, Lava Run. Still working on it. Still working on it. Okay. Thank you, Melbell. You are really good at that. Let me have one more drink of coffee, and then we'll get back to crocheting our our um, our treasure chest. I've also been making a lot of dinosaurs. I've got like like fifteen T Rexes in the other room right now. I just got a bunch of orders online, so I've just been crocheting T-Rexes. I should do them, oopsies. I should do more impromptu um, uh, live streams too. Ah, I'm bumping everything. Okay, so where are we at here? Where are we at? We have got to hide in all these ends. Ugh, I hate doing that. But we gotta do what we gotta do here. So we're just gonna go into the, each of these and just hide all the ends in and then we'll cut them all together. This music kind of sounds like, um, it, this is from Legend of Zelda, by the way. I know we talked about it earlier, but I never finally said what it was. But yes, it's Legend of Zelda music. But it kind of sounds like Avatar, the last airbender music. A little bit. Gosh, I love Avatar. So good. I like Korra too. Jules and I just finished watching Legend of Korra recently. Um, I've watched it like three times, but she watched it for the first time. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so exciting that um, Netflix is doing a live action version of the Avatar, but man, if they screw that up, they better not screw that up. They better not. You will, they will upset a lot of people if they mess that up. And I'd be one of them. Sunshine's made all the dinos. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna work on an Aptiosaurus, I think next. Um, I've got a Raptor I've been working on as well. So that, so. A raptor and an Aptiosaurus, I think, are going to be the next ones. That's so cool, though. I mean, seeing people post online things that they've made using my patterns is, like, I I know I say it all the time, but seriously, it never gets old. It is It makes my day every time I see something that someone made using something that, something that I made that I taught. It's just really cool. It's just really cool. It makes it makes everything feel like it's worth it because <laughs> it's exhausting to do all these patterns. Um, and I have a full time job on top of this, you know, so it's not like I'm making a lot of money doing this. And that really sends it the way uh, seeing things that people make using my patterns really makes it all 
makes sense to me. Makes it all worth it. Okay, and there we go. Speaking of which, if you are cro if you crochet a treasure chest between now and this Friday, um, which I believe is the twenty seventh. So if you crochet it before Friday and post it on Instagram, you can see a little thing right here about it with hashtag club crochet live and tagging the Instagram account club dot crochet. That's the club crochet Instagram account. I will uh, be choosing one person randomly um, next live stream. I'll be announcing one person that wins the giveaway that has crocheted the treasure chest and we'll be giving them a free month for Club Crochet. So you'll get a free month. So make your treasure chests. And get the free pattern now. If you do it right now and you don't have, you know, that way you can get it for free. Just go to clubcrochet.com slash treasure. I <laughs> Uh, story post might be difficult because I'm gonna, I'm going to be, um, like, it's gonna be hard to find those, I think. I don't really understand how Instagram stories work as well right now. So, I think, uh, for this one, I mean, you can post it as a story, I just don't think it'll, I'll find it. I'm, I'm worried I won't find it, you know? Mm. And I won't be able to keep track of it because they go away, you know? There we go. And I want to be able to... The way I'm going to choose it randomly is I'm going to find out how many posts there are. Not including my own, obviously, because I posted with hashtag Club Crochet Live. But right now, hashtag Club Crochet Live is an empty one. So I'm going to count how many treasure chests there are. Let's say there's 50 people that put, which there will not be 50. There's probably going to be like five people <laughs> that crochet the treasure chest. So your chances are pretty high. But, uh, and I'll go to a random number generator. <clears throat> and I'll just say, um, randomly generate a number between one and whatever, five. And whatever number that is, I'll count down from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five and choose that person and I'll announce them on the next live stream. That's the idea. So hopefully it goes as smoothly as I think it will. And this is definitely the most annoying part. And you don't have to do a good treasure chest. Just attempt it. I don't think I don't think that many people are gonna finish up a treasure chest. It'll just be a normal membership, just the just the membership level account, not a pro membership. But if you are already a member, you can still submit, and you'll get a still a free month. One of your months, I'll I'll just give you a refund on one of your months. Still struggling with a bow tie. I I hear that. Practice, 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 man. It'd be really cool if there were a lot of people that made that entered the giveaway, but I don't know how many people will actually have the uh, time or energy to make an entire treasure chest. It's a lot, you know. It's a big, it's a big pattern. It's a very big pattern. And clearly, t 
takes more time than I was expecting. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. How long have we been going? I think we're at... That's not bad. Hour 15. I suspect we'll probably have another... Maybe another hour's left. Toad Mag, what you said, please what? Okay. There we go. We're going to start with. Oh, we still need to put together these top ones. Hold on, Lou. You're going too far ahead of yourself here. You're almost done, though. Hide in... I'm supposed to hide in all the ends. Right past Lou? Yes, I am. Okay. Jules and I watched The Mummy last night. The first Mummy. We, we have this thing that we've been doing where we watch... Um, we've been watching, like, series of movies. So we watched the Alien series. Uh, we watched The Blade. Uh, if you don't remember what Blade is, it is a uh, movie about a uh, half-vampire vampire killer. Wesley Snipes is the is Blade. Terrible movies. They're, they were all really bad, but, man... They were entertaining. And so now we did a, um, now we did, uh, the mummy. So we're on the mummy series now. <laughs> There's so many mummy movies. It's crazy. Cause they did the, um, the Scorpion King movies and there are like, there's like five Scorpion King movies. Oh, they look so bad. Yes, I'm thinking sharks for Shark Week would be really cool. I'm trying to go really fast right now because I have a... Um, next week we're doing... Um, I'm trying to basically come out with a pattern every single week this month. So, it's a lot. Um, we're doing a uh, sandcastle. Um, that's actually another collaboration pattern. So, I'm doing a few collaboration patterns uh, coming up. One is Gulliver. That's actually um, originally not my pattern. It is a pattern by an artist who goes by Sir Pearl Gray. I give him a shout out all the time. I love him. He's great. Um, he's a very cool artist. He did the giant bell bag and the um, uh, the Gulliver here. And then after that, we have a sand castle by another artist who I've worked with before. Um, she goes by uh, Ravencrafts. She is a very talented crocheter. So I reached out to her, saw, uh, asked if she could do another pattern with us. She did the um, uh, the milkshake. Very talented Amy Groovy artist. So she did a, um, a, a sand castle. So we'll be doing a sandcastle. A, um, I'm working on a pattern. I'm thinking um, a beach ball would be a really cool free pattern. So I'm working on a beach ball pattern. Uh, and the reason I think it'd be really cool is because it'd be great for beginners uh, to get a grasp on color changes, uh, which is something I really wanted to do, is get a video where it helps people learn color changes a little bit easier. And I think what would be cool also with those, uh, with the beach ball, beach theme stuff is to do a, um, a shark, shark week shark. Like a really easy one. I, I, I want to do the patterns like, you know, I mean, you know me. I like no sew patterns. I like patterns that you don't really need to sew too many pieces together on. I say that as I'm making a 
pattern where it's like literally all sewn together. But you get what I mean. All right, we need our gold yarn. We're on the next pot. Um, Toad Mag, yes, I will be, I'll, I'll put a, I have a fra frog pattern um, that I can add to the rough drafts. That will come out soon. And thank you for uh, your help, Mel Bell. Okay, so for this, now here's the weird part. You gotta do, you gotta do the arch. So we start with a slip knot. And we're going to pull it through like I want one of these to be the back. I think we're going to have this be the back. Right there. And then we'll go, we need these arch ones. And I think we're going to Actually, we'll just go. Yeah, let's go under just the front loop here. Wait, is that the best? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's pull this slip knot through that, under that, like that. Each. Ditch. This is how it's done. See, I mean, even this, like, I know I said this has a lot of parts sewn together, but they're actually not sewn together. It's all crocheted together because I hate sewing things together. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I'm having struggle with um, the... Gulliver pattern. There's a lot of pieces that you have to sew together in the Gulliver pattern. Um, and it's just so cute. Like, you know, it looks really, really good. It's just there's a lot of pieces to sew together. And in videos, that's really hard to explain how to sew things together. See, so we're just crocheting these guys together. Easy. Squeezy, lemon peasy. Is there any more? Oh, no, okay. See? Now the side is connected. Looks like I didn't sew this end in very well. Whoopsies. Whatever. It's, I don't think it'll come apart. I would just go across. You know, these aren't... This actually isn't that bad. I think it's the bottom part that is a little bit more difficult to put together. Alright, now we're going to work back up it. Sorry, I know I'm getting really quiet here. Just takes a little bit more focus to make sure I'm getting into the right spots. I don't want to mess this up at all. Oh, and um, I think I've mentioned this before already, but I'll mention it again just in case I didn't. Uh, this month's crochet kit for pro members is for a crocheted brontosaurus. So if you want to join in here, I can show you what that looks like too. Boom. So if you look in the corner here, right there, 
the, the one in the far farthest in the corner. That's the Brontosaurus. So this month's crochet kit uh, for pro members is going to be for that Brontosaurus. So if you want to get a crochet kit with all the materials that you need, um, sign up before uh, the end of the month. So sign up before, I would say July um, 30th. There we go. And you will get that that crochet kit for a pro membership. I mean, yeah, these stitches are difficult to work into. There you go. You can see these ends here. I didn't hide them good enough. Oh well. But there's the top of our treasure chest. Per good, look per good. Okay. I think we'll just, let's see, what does it want me to do? Just pull it on through. Okay. Let's put this to the side and get the base of it crocheted together. Let's check the chat because I haven't seen that soon. Uh, Coco, a uh, Chocobo pattern from Final Fantasy. Uh, you know, I never really played Final Fantasy, but I'll check it out. Um, I'll add it to the list. I have a list of of suggestions, um, so I'm trying to work off that list a little bit as well. Uh, if I can. Um, and I actually have Frog already on that list, Toad Mag. Or Toad. I'll I'll change I'll add Toad too. A beholder. I like that idea. I've done a beholder's eye. So I know I know how I'll do it if I do that. Alright, so let's do the bottom here. So D connects to E. This is D, one. We need E, which is this one. And we need, okay, so we start in the corner of D. So right here. Do it like that. Corner of D and the corner of E. So like that. Yep. You don't know how you got your yarn into your mouth. That's funny. Okay, so this goes like this. And then we go across. And this will connect D, our front to our base. And then we'll do the side and, ah. I'm so glad I made these charts. So there's, in the pattern for this, there's like a bunch of charts that tell you how to put it all together. They are really helpful. I'm glad I do these live streams for crocheting old patterns as well because it gives me like an insight into the old patterns and a lot of the times it makes me want to redo the patterns like last week when we did the um, the Triceratops. 
You know what I mean? How I like redid it. Okay. We got the base. Now we need one of these sides. We'll just go up it. I'm having a hard time getting into that one. Oh, there we go. Nope. Wait. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, no. Oh, well. Amy Gurumi boy! How you doing, dude? Welcome. Hey, Amy Gurumi boy, you should totally get this pattern really quick while you can. This pattern's available for only 24 hours for free. There's a link on screen now. And if you crochet it and post a picture on Instagram, I'm doing a giveaway, um, a random giveaway, so you have a chance to win a free month membership to the site. If you want, if you want, you can. You just got to crochet this treasure chest and post a picture with hashtag club crochet live and tag at club dot crochet. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay. And this bottom one right here. I think what we do, we go into this bottom one and then we sew up. Yes. Okay, I see. And then you just cut that. Oh. Cut that like this. We'll just pull that through. And then we use these two ends and sew it together. So both those ends differently though, I think. We'll do this on this side. Amiga Rumi. That's me doing magic ding nabbit. What do you think? Huzzah! <laughs> it's Amiga Rumi, not Amiga Rumi. That's my Hermione. Emiguru me, not Emiguru ma. Spring ha. All right. That's pretty good. All right, so now we can just double knot these guys. One, a two. And we'll cut him loose-ish. Kind of close like that. Toss that to the side. And let's get the other side sewn on. Same kind of thing. Let's do that slip knot. 
It's Amigurumi, not Amigurumi. <laughs> oh, Lizzie. I'll see you later. Later, skater. Okay, so how do we do the next side? Boop. Mm-hmm, we go from the corner of this one. Like this. Corner. Front post corner. Pull it under. go oh you're still here okay I'm sorry I thought you were heading out you said bye I know it's late over there she's in the UK and it's late it's a good nighttime practice though crocheting right before bed is great Get you nice and sleepy. It's like reading a book. Oh. There we go. <laughs> I'm Dumbledork, headmaster at Hookworts. Are you kidding me? Mel Bell. That was incredible. Did you have you been practicing that? Did you think about that like a long time ago? That is so you're a clever one. Dumbledore. Dumbledork. <laughs> Hogwarts. You are so funny. Oh my god. Almost done. Actually, this part of the pattern, I gotta say, it's pretty fun. Like, I mean, it's a little annoying to, to like, crochet two or, you know, a box together, but it is pretty fun. Because it's unique. And I forgot about it. And it's, honestly, it's not that difficult. It's not too tough. I remember I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than it is. Where's the other part? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> do, <laughs> do. just work our way back down we'll hope that everything looks great together and nothing is messed up because mm, yes mm, yes hey that's pretty good that's pretty good huh and then we'll just sew on the bottom part. Oh man, I love it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Man, I totally forgot about how proud I am of this pattern. This pattern is cool.
Yes, we will have a tre treasure chest in no time. Where we can hide all of our treasures. I'm just going to go on the inside with it. We'll double knot it over there. Yeah, the pattern, so the pattern is free on the site, but to download the PDF, you'll actually need a membership level account, which is, you can try a free trial if you'd like, but that is a paid version of the account. back we'll just go up somewhere on the side that's fine whatever up we've got a base we got a top we can cut these there we go Okay, so then this will go like that. I should probably crochet the locks from first, though. But I like how it, this one I didn't I didn't do this on purpose, but it actually goes slightly over it, so you can see how it kind of like barely goes over it with the lip there, and I think that's really good because it we can actually close it then, and I'll try to sew it closed like that. I've got an idea for how to keep it closed as well. And we'll do a our little locks. How do we do the locks? Okay. This. Oh, that those are easy. Okay. Oh my god! I like the cat box. Duvochka Super 27. <laughs> I like your name too. It's kind of fun to say. So three, and then we'll just tighten that up. Easy squeezy. We'll add the top lock first. I also, we watched um, uh, X-Men Apocalypse last night, which is like, wait, let me see. One, two, three. That'll work. Um, so we watched X-Men Apocalypse last night, which was the not the most recent X-Men, movie but the one right before that and it was not great it was so weird they just they just didn't it just didn't make any sense a lot of the movie I was like what are you why did this happen There you go. 
That's pretty straight. And then we'll just go this one down the center one. That makes sense, Lou, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, boss. No, you ain't crazy. Why? Why you? Who told you you was crazy? No one. All right. I'm not crazy. Um, I don't think we'll be doing a name se selection for this one, D D maps, and the reason is because I don't think I'm going to be doing a. I don't think I'm going to be doing it into a mimic. It's just going to be the 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 um the treasure chest because I want to put I want to add it to this uh, stitched set. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? All right, let's make the second one here. Hope that's okay. Dean D Maps. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining, dude. I can't wait to see your your treasure chest. Uh, to your question about the music. I, I probably won't be able to play Lord of the Rings or Hobbit music because I'll get a copyright claim. That's why I do a lot of video game music is because um, I don't get hit with a copyright infringement thing because it's video game music. And if they they hit people with copyright infringements, then they'll never be able to show um, people actually playing their game and stuff. So I like to use video game music because of that for that reason. Whereas if I did Lord of the Rings and Hobbit music, I'd get hit with copyright strike pretty much right away. And uh, that would just be disappointing, you know? Not a mean jelly bean. Pasta la pizza D, D maps. Thank you so much for joining. And I'm very excited to see your treasure chest. Alright, so we'll do that one. Come out. Although, obviously, Lord of the Rings music is like my favorite do 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 All right, just a little bit more. And then we can just sew these guys together. I think that'll be it. Huh? Eh? Huh? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I still like pirate patterns, too, for this treasure chest. We'll just have it be like that. I think I'm going to hide these ones. One. And then, yeah, we'll just hide these knots on the inside somewhere. Pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> put a little mirror inside so that when they look in the chest, don't make them feel good. I like that. That's a cute idea. But what if they don't like the way they look? 
You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. You're the real treasure. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave these long ones because I have an idea for how to make sure that it stays sewn shut. But I think I can just sew it together with this end. Go like this. Actually, let's go. Let's go in. There we go. Hello, Don. <laughs> you missed everything. That's okay. That's all good. It happens. That's all good. But hey, Don, just so you know, we're doing a giveaway with this one. If you crochet a treasure chest, um, first off, the pattern's free right now. If you just go to clubcrochet.com slash treasure, uh, it'll be free for the next 24 hours. And afterward, if you post a picture on Instagram with hashtag club crochet live and tag a uh, club dot crochet, that's the Instagram handle for club crochet. Um, I will choose one person that has crocheted the treasure chest uh, within the next week. Uh, next live stream and we will uh, they'll get a free membership to a free month membership to Club Crochet. So if you're interested, might be kind of cool. I just want to see some crocheted treasure chests. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna use this other end too. It's not very much, but it might just be enough so that I can sew it together I'm hoping double knot it's what I mean you'll yeah well you'll still get uh hey Don even if you're chosen, one of your month memberships will get fr uh, will still be free. I'm gonna give that option for people if they want. So even if you're a member, if you even if you have a membership level account, you could still enter to the giveaway because one of your you'll basically just get a refund on your last month to make it you know work. Or uh, you can maybe we can make it so you can like gift it to another user if you want to. I don't know how to do that yet, but maybe we'll figure that out. I don't think I'm going to make it all the way with this little this little piece here. I'm worried. I'm worried I won't make it, but we are going to try. Just a few more little little strand. You can do it. I believe in you. I should not have cut you so short. I know I regret my mistake now. All right, we're gonna call it here then. Because I don't think it's gonna make it. I played Yon Chicken and I kinda lost. Not really, but kind of. All right, one. Two on the double knot, and then we could just hide this end in. Bye, smoke dragonfly. Smoke spark dragonfly. Sounds like, you, that's a, sounds like a 
a dragon name or a, or a or an elf name or something. I like it. It's cool. There we go. And we'll hide this end. I'm all excited because I made a treasure chest. Almost made a treasure chest. There we go. So here's what I'm going to do with this end here, because I want to make it so I can keep this closed if I want it, you know, because sometimes it, it I have a problem where it won't close all the way, which you can see right here. I mean, I like that. I like that it won't close. Uh, so it looks like a real treasure chest, but I do want the to have the option to close it if I want to and to keep it closed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two ends that I use the top with and we're gonna go in through the very base of our piece like that actually maybe I should go through actually let's go through this we'll go through the the lock itself and then through the base. And we'll do that with each of these ends and then that way I can just pull this. That way I can just pull this like that and it'll close it. I'm trying to make this equal. So on. And there. Let's go like right there. And then we'll come out through somewhere different but close. Like right here. There we go. There, now, now that way we can like pull it so it stays closed. And if we want to open it, we can just open it up. So we want to double knot it about right there so that it doesn't get pulled out too far. We do pull it out. Okay. Yeah, we won't be doing a tongue and teeth for um, this one that we're making on the live stream because I really want to have this treasure chest for a crochet kit. I mean, for a stitch set that I'm making. But there we go. Now we can just pull this. And we'll close it up. We can keep that under it. And we have a treasure chest. How long have we been going? Almost two hours exactly. All right. Well, there's our treasure chest. Maybe we'll take some of the gold from this guy's mouth. Hi. He's going to bite me. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Um... Okay, well, maybe I'll make some other gold at a different time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, please, please, a couple things before I go. Um, One, I love you guys. You guys are great. Thank you guys so much for joining me, um, for chatting with me and keeping me company as I crochet. Two, uh, quick, get this pattern. Get it right here clubcrochet.com slash treasure. It's available for the next 24 hours. Um, so if you want to get it, get it now. Um, the video version and the pattern are free and then I'll turn it off after 24 hours. Uh, so it'll be available for membership accounts only or for purchase. Also, if you crochet this character this month uh, or this week, post it before Friday and uh, use hashtag club crochet. You can see it right there, club crochet live and tag club.crochet on Instagram and you'll be entered for a chance to win a free one month membership. 
um, and I'll uh, announce the winner next Sunday. It'll be completely random as long as you crochet a treasure. Also, uh, I can't see private accounts, so if you have a private account, I'm sorry. Um, I do, I'm trying to figure out a way around that uh, in the future. Um, but for right now, if you have a private account, unfortunately, it won't enter you in if you post it. I'm sorry about that. Um, but again, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm thinking maybe moving to Reddit for giveaways in the future. Not sure yet. Um, what else? Uh, uh, this, if you want to check out the new pattern for this cro uh, crocheted bell bag um, made with almost the exact same, actually, yeah, the same yarn except for some red. Um, that is going. That is available now for membership accounts and uh, will be available soon for free. So make sure to subscribe down below, hit the bell icon so you can get notifications when I come out with new videos, and uh, like this video. Please, please like this video. Uh, it helps it get spread out um, to other people that to you know introduce other people to crochet, which I think is pretty cool. Um, okay, I think that's just about it. Um, thank you guys again for crocheting this with me uh and i'll see you next week i think i have plans for next week actually let me look one second i have it saved on my phone for what i wanted to do with the live stream next week um if i can find my cal calendar my cat cat calendar next sunday Oh, it looks like I was going to do Gulliver. I'm not sure if I'm going to do Gulliver still. But it looks like Gulliver is part of the plan. So this is what Gulliver looks like. So we might be crocheting a Gulliver next week. I'm not totally sure yet. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And you'll get notified whenever uh, I decide whatever I'm going to be making there. Um, maybe I'll ask for you guys' uh, opinion in the uh, Club Crochet poll. Like a YouTube poll. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, thank you guys again. I am just stalling because I like hanging out with you guys. <laughs> All right. Pasta la pizza, mi amigos. Oh, Don asks, how many characters do we have for Stitch now? Let's see. We got goblins, orcs, ogres, trolls, hobgoblins, uh... Fungaloids or mushroom men, um, kobolds, and soon there's going to be dwarves. So we almost have eight characters for Stitched. Uh, and then there's going to be more. I'm going to try to add dragons. Uh, I want to add elves. Um, I've got an ent I've been working on. So a lot, a lot of stuff coming out soon. Okay. All right. Enough stalling. Pasta la pizza. <laughs> <laughs>